uh, reporting on it. What's this connection that you've been reporting on between Israel and Colombia? Can you can you talk about that? Yeah, sure. Um, first, I saw somebody asking the name of the the video that Max mentioned that I did on Syria. It's called the Syria Deception, um, and it's on Gray Zone's YouTube channel. Maybe you know someone, uh, Brian, you can link it in that email in the the essay length email. Um, but yeah, so I did a piece, I guess it was released, I don't know, three or four weeks ago on, um, basically Israel's role in genocide in Colombia. What a, what a court ruled was a political genocide, um, in starting in 1984 and technically, uh, went until 2002, but really never stopped. Um, and so, um, Basically, this was actually a revelation that came out in January in Colombian media, but wasn't really picked, wasn't picked up in English language media at all. And so I kind of took that and then, you know, went into a, a lot of other um, kind of history of is Israel training paramilitary death squads in Colombia, and then how that kind of set the stage for current Israel Colombia relations. So basically, right now, there's um, you know, another what you could call a political genocide going on in Colombia. I mean, I'm, I'm sure everyone has seen there are these mass protests going on. But um, in addition to that, since 2016, uh, in 2016, there was a peace accord signed between the government and the, um, the, the, the FARC, what is like the a left wing rebel group. Um, that was very powerful for many years, and but they had been basically beaten down by the Colombian government with uh, big major assistance from the CIA. And so when the FARC laid down their arms um, and agreed to reintegrate into society, the Colombian government then began assassinating them. Um, you know, now they're defenseless. And so uh, since 2016, they've killed about 250, um, a little more than 250 now, um, ex-FARC combatants and something like 1,150 approximately social leaders as well, um, who are, you know, basically rural peasants who organize against, um, you know, international corporations who are pillaging resources in Colombia, um, oil, gold, minerals, these kinds of things. Um, and, you know, and, and also against the international drug cartels, you know, that are basically feeding um, the U.S. and Europe's insatiable demand for cocaine. Um, and so, you know, this extermination of left-wing kind of progressive leaders, um, um, indigenous people, Afro-Colombians, uh, peasants of all kinds, are, you know, they're being wiped out. You see the Israeli military has an advisor role there. Um, and in September of 2020, as this, as the most massacres of 2020 were taking place, the Israeli military was there um, last year and this year. They, the Colombian government spent millions and millions of dollars on Galil assault rifles from Israel. Um, they have Israeli drones. So Israel plays a pretty remarkably um, big role, of course, in addition to, you know, the main, the main player was the United States, but Israel has an outsized role in Colombia. And this really picks up in 1984. Um, and it's kind of actually what's going on now is history repeating itself. So in 1984, you have uh, the liberal president, um, Betancourt, made a peace agreement with the, with the FARC, um, where the FARC basically took their struggle to the political arena. And they formed a political party called the Patriotic Union. And the Patriotic Union basically was not only FARC uh, combatants, but also communists, you know, union leaders, just left-wing progressive people in general. And so um, then there's a, another election in 86. And right, around, right soon after this election, um, the Patriotic Union members start getting assassinated and the pace really picks up and, um, and basically, they assassinated multiple presidential candidates. They assassinated uh, um, thousands of, of members of the party to the point where, and this went on for, for basically two decades, to the point where in 2002, they were removed um, from the, uh, elector the, the electoral authority, removed the Patriotic Union um, as a party because they didn't um, have 
you know, enough people to essentially qualify. So this was what, a, as I said, a Colombian court ruled was a political genocide. So at the same time in the 1980s, not only do you have this genocide, this political genocide of the patriotic union going on, you also have an Israeli mercenary named Yair Klein, who um, basically, you know, would have retired from the Israeli military doing, you know, counterterrorism. Um, and started a mercenary outfit. He sold weapons to the Christian Phalangist militias in Lebanon, um, which carried out the infamous Sabra and Shatila massacres that Israel oversaw, um, which, uh, you know, I, I, presumably people, you know, know what happened there. And then he, he lands um, in Colombia and ends up training um, some, some paramilitary figures, including the Castaño brothers, who became the most feared, gruesome, you know, horrible uh, death squad leaders that would just terrorize the country essentially to this day. Um, you know, these death squads still exist, um, just in kind of different formations and with some different leadership. And these were trained by Israel. They're actually a product. They were actually uh, the, the idea of paramilitaries in Colombia was created on um, advice and training from the U.S. originally in the 60s in order to defeat uh, the FARC. But the modern death squads started uh, under Israeli training in the 80s. So a lot of this has been known. All of this stuff has basically been known, you know, since about 1990. They knew about the, the role of Yair Klein in Colombia. Um, and, you know, really any progressive in Colombia knows who this guy is. Um, what they don't know what, and what, um, uh, what came out in January is that that political genocide of the Patriotic Union was actually ordered by the president. Uh, Virgilio Barco was his name. Um, and it was advised by an Israeli spy named Rafi Eitan. Rafi Eitan was also the, um, he was a, a spy who oversaw the, um, the Jonathan Pollard uh, uh, campaign operation in the United States to basically steal naval intelligence documents for Israel. Um, and so basically, um, Eitan was indicted as a, he was, he was an unindicted co-conspirator. So the U.S. went soft on him, allowed him to go back to Israel. He got a cushy job uh, in one of Israel's biggest state-owned companies. And in his free time, he went to Colombia to basically advise the president on how to commit genocide, um, a political genocide. And so this is where it came out. And so my piece kind of, you know, details all of this and, and explains it all. Um, and, and so, you know, it's just remarkable. I mean, Max talked about the role of, of Israel in Guatemala um, and, you know, the, the horrors that, that happened there under the Rio Smont dictatorship. And of course, you know, what happened, as I just described, in a Colombian so-called democracy. That's one of the remarkable things about all the horrors that have, you know, happened in Colombia is this all took place under ostensible democracy. Um, Colombia hasn't been in a official dictatorship, I think, since like the 50s. Um, so, yeah, I mean, my piece uh, was published at Mint Press News. It's called um, uh, Investigation Reveals the Role of Israel in, political, in Colombia's Political Genocide, something along those lines. Um, and yeah, that's, that's you know, basically what happened.